be the Pablo. Oh, he riding clean too. Mm. Drop a dime on that. I don't like that. Let's take some calls from the request line. Call number one. Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Fantastic, freaky, funny football Friday. And we will give you the funky four later, the uh, four biggest games in football this weekend. There's only four games this weekend in football, so. But we'll uh, we'll break down all the playoff games coming up this weekend. There's also one college football game. Uh, y'all already know about that. I talked about that on yesterday. Uh, FCS Championship, JMU taking on Youngstown State. Uh, pay attention to my little cousin, Derek Rivers, defensive end for Youngstown State. And I think JMU actually passes the ball a lot. So he's going to get a lot of opportunities, man, to just pin his ears back and go for the quarterback. Y'all going to see how he gets down. Uh, once again, already invited to the East-West Shrine game. Already got his invite to the Senior Bowl. Uh, so big things in uh, in store for that young man. Yes, sir. Hey, I just thought about it. One, one other. So we hit so many things. We hit so many things with Dorsey Levins in the interview that we have the latest episode of Chop It Up on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. Um, the interview was like 40 minutes long, uh, maybe a little bit shorter than 40 minutes long. But it, for people that don't know, I, I mentioned it earlier that Dorsey is a burgeoning actor, okay? Um, and he actually, for the last seven months, uh, toured and did like a stage play with Tyler Perry. Like he was like one of the main regulars with Tyler Perry. So I talked to him and I asked him about, you know, that experience working with Tyler Perry. So real good stuff, man. I'm telling you, check out this episode to chop it up on the Stewart Media and Entertainment Network. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show dot com. Um, here's a quote from Joe Mixon. I'm going to tell them the NFL the complete truth, Mixon said in a phone interview. That it's never okay to be in a situation I was in or to hit a woman. I'm looking for them to get to know the actual me. Joe Mixon's controversial career in Norman, Oklahoma, came to a close with the soonest 35-19 victory over Auburn in Monday's Sugar Bowl. Uh, Third-year sophomore, Mixon was suspended for the 2014 season for punching a woman at Norman at a Norman deli. Uh, he finished the season second nationally in all-purpose yardage. It was an all Big 12 selection. Uh, Mel Kuyper, uh, as far as his draft grade, he gets a first-round draft grade from the uh, so-called st- uh, scouts or consultants or whatever. But Mel Kuyper doesn't even have him on his board because he doesn't think he's going to get drafted. And maybe it might even be some type of you know uh, protest by Mel Kuyper as well. You know, because a lot of people got strong feelings about this kid and having the opportunity to ever play football again. And that's and there's not a, even a lot to say about this. This is just some latest statements that came out yesterday from him. Uh, not really a lot to talk about. Kind of just echoing my thoughts about this story from before, man. It, it's, it's, very, it's very disturbing. And we're really, uh, really seen it over the last years. I guess many, many years. When you talk about three strikes and you're talking about mandatory minimum sentences, when you see these types of stories where somebody does something wrong, ooh, I can take it back to Mike Vick. Yeah, like you remember when Mike Vick got in all of the trouble for the dogs and all of that, man? Like most of America, quote unquote America, didn't want Mike Vick to ever have the opportunity to earn money again. That like like once you do something wrong in this country where America, quote unquote America, feels like that that, you know, they don't want you to have an opportunity ever again, then it's a wrap. Yeah, like folks didn't want Mike Vick to ever play in the NFL again. Even though he served almost two years in jail, paid all his restitution, nah, throw his ass to the wolves. No pun intended. Throw his ass to the wolves. He should never have the opportunity to make money again. Well, but how is he supposed to live? How is he supposed to feed his family? We don't care. (laughs) Same with this Joe Mixon thing this morning. I always tell y'all I keep Mike and Mike on in the morning. And Mike Golick just went on and on about 
You know, he tried to he tried to play both sides of the fence or whatever. He hedged his bet or whatever. He kept saying, well, yeah, I believe he has the opportunity to work, you know, and, and play football or whatever if a, if a team drafts him. But I wouldn't draft him for my team. I wouldn't take him for my team, this, that, and the other. Um, I'm all about second chances, man. I mean, it's as simple as that. People make mistakes. They gave this example of uh, Tyreek Evans, how he had actually done a similar type thing in college. And the Kansas City Chiefs kind of like took a, took a chance on him. And it's basically proven out to be a good chance because from what I know or from what I, I – I haven't heard anything about Tyreek Evans being a bad person or hitting a woman ever again. This happened like when he was a sophomore in college. He actually got kicked out of school. He had to transfer. So bottom line is he became a, a, a great citizen, you know, since fourth. And it is very disturbing, man, to hear people say he shouldn't have an opportunity. He shouldn't be able to work. He shouldn't be able to do that. Um, and that's your opinion. That's fine, man. I just disagree with it. 404-382-0338. So I'm wishing this kid, I'm wishing this kid the best. I'm hoping that that was a mistake. Uh, I'm not saying that it wasn't wrong. It was wrong. I don't think that I would have acted that harshly in that situation. But that being said, there was a lot of different little layers to that whole story and how it went down. They were calling him the N-word, supposedly. She put his hands on him. I'm not trying to make excuses for anybody. All I'm saying is, I think that this cat deserves another opportunity. That's all I'm saying. And a lot of America, a lot of America, if you make one mistake that they deem too big of a mistake, they don't want you to ever have an opportunity to do anything else. And I think that's bullshit. From T-Dub in the chat room on Spreaker.com, he says, it was a setup, Doug. He still had, he still had residual in his system. From a year, T Dub? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's talking about he's talking about Randy Gregory, I believe. Uh bruh, he still got residual drugs in his system from a year. Remember now he's been suspended for a year. Or the entire season, and I guess he was suspended maybe over the summer as well. Um taking the test again within a two week period is actually unjustified. Okay, I, I don't, I don't know anything about that T Dub. Now you gotta keep in mind, T Dub is a Dallas Cowboys fan. I do know that. Yeah, I do know that. From the forty seventh problem, Randy Gregory likes the blast that stick. You think he's on crack, man? I don't think he on crack. I mean, you really don't hear about players, athletes. Doing crack, and when you say that that stick, I, I guess we mean a crack pipe. I don't know. I don't. I'm not too um, keen on my drug uh, 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 vernacular. <laughs> From Coop in the chat room on Spreaker.com. What up, Coop? He says the problem with suspensions is that it leaves the guys with a lot of free time on their hands. I think hefty fines would be better. You know, I, I tend to agree, man. I mean, what do you expect guys to do when they got all that idle time? Randy Gregory sitting around over a year? Like, I know in my mind, thinking of Randy Gregory and the things that he's done since his short career in the league, like, I can picture Randy Gregory, like, getting up at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, going to the strip club at noon and watching some ass all day long. Having a steak at the strip club. You know they got the best steaks at strip clubs. Uh, leaving the strip club maybe 4 or 5 o'clock. Going to the weight room. Acting like he's working out for an hour or two. And then sitting around the house and thinking about getting some weed. That's what I think. You're right. I agree. Too much idle time, man. Uh, and there's got to be a better way to address. Like, why would you suspend, suspend somebody? For a crime like that when you actually need to get them help. Like, wouldn't it be better for the NFL and for the league to have that person, like, on their grounds, you know, uh, you know, eight hours a day or whatever, have a professional counselor there talking to them or whatever? You know, they're under contract, so they have to do what you want them to do. And maybe they don't go out and they can't go out and play football and practice with the team, but they could be in a classroom or whatever on the facility and have a, a professional drug counselor there talking to them, you know, and doing, you know, all types of different counseling. I don't know. You're right. It doesn't seem smart. 
to have somebody that committed a crime like that, a quote-unquote crime, you know, just sitting around their house all day long for a year. I agree. From ducking and dodging, if you pay too much attention to critics, it can fool you into thinking the world is against you. Yeah, from Rough Buff x look at the four kids in Chi-Town who kidnapped the white boy and Facebook lived it. They're going to lock them away for life, but how many times black folks are treated and they look the other way? Yeah, exactly. And, and w- that whole story, man, is crazy as hell. First of all, bust a war for those kids that did that. Um, and I don't understand these young kids, but you're exactly right. Um, these kids are probably going to get put away for life. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll find out exactly what happened because it was heinous. Uh, if, if all the details of that story are true, it was heinous. But we've seen a man get shot in the back five times running away. And the cops walking free right now. I don't even need to get into all of the different, you know, injustices in this country concerning black people. You know what the record is. Uh, But real crazy story, man. I saw that video. I'm like, really? Like, I don't think these kids understand. (laughs) And you're listening to the Doug Stewart show. I don't know if they were high or what. I don't think these kids understand that Facebook Live and Periscope and putting stuff on the interweb means that everybody in the world can see it. (laughs) Yeah. Like there's almost a disconnect that this stuff that you put on the internet, they think that only their friends can see it. No. Uh, Everybody in the world can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, everybody in the world, you know, I guess even in other worlds as well. In other universes, they're watching this video on Facebook. Uh, Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy these kids today, man. Unbelievable, unbelievable. All right, when we get back from the break, man, all I'm going to do is read chat, a little chat segment on Spreaker.com. Make sure you cast your vote for this week's Buster of the Week. We call it the Ball Penis Buster of the Week uh, at the Doug Stewart Show chat group on Facebook. And your nominees are Christian Wilkins, Ohio State, Soldier Boy, Grego. We'll read chat. Coming up next. Don't go away. <laughs> 